Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets on this episode of Motorcycle Heavyweights. We cover the life of the legendary Sonny Barga of the Hells Angels MC from an author to a producer, one percenter. The man has done it all and we get into it on this episode of Demons Row TV. And no, oh yeah, we ghosting, baby. Shout out to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening. And today we talk about a legend in the culture. A lot of people that have commented on the other motorcycle heavyweight videos we've done says that Sonny is on the Mount Rushmore of this culture let me know what you think about that in the comments who are the big four of the culture as far as influential not any affiliation with any club or anything like that but just the four most influential people to you let me know that in the comments who are the people that inspire other people to want to get on twos and live the lifestyle so we're going to break down sunny's life for very exciting life but the first thing i want you to do like we always do on this channel is to hit me with that pound ghost in and that lets me know you're alive and well sitting on twos doing what you do or just part of the demons row community one of my ghosts shout to all my new subscribers welcome to the row make sure you hit that bell so you get the notification hit the like button follow us on instagram at demons row at sos the ghost underscore shout to everybody that's been supporting the demons row clothing you could get those underneath any video or www.demonsrow.com and let's get into it so it says ralph hubert sunny barger is an american outlaw biker author and actor founding member 1957 of the oakland california chapter of the hells angels motorcycle club he said he was born in modesto california on october 8th 1938 so two days after me i'm october 6th libras are the bomb libras do their thing he joined his first motorcycle club the oakland panthers in 1956 after the oakland panthers disbanded he started riding with another group of bikers one of whom Don Boots Reeves wore a patch, a small skull, wearing an aviator cap set within a set of wings that belonged to a defunct motorcycle club in North Sacramento. Founding their own club named the Hells Angels on April 1st, 1957, each member wore the patch, later known as the Hells Angels Death Head logo. With Otto Fredley, the founder of the original San Bernardino Hells Angels chapter, aka Burdu, in jail, Barga was proclaimed national president in 1958. His first wife, Elisa May, died on February 1st, 1967 from an air bubble in her bloodstream, resulting from an illegal abortion. Circa 1969, he began a relationship with Sharon Gutwright, a former beauty queen from Livermore. In his 1978 book, A Wayward Angel, Barger convened a meeting of the leaders of the Hells Angels and other California MCs in which the various clubs parlayed over the mutual problem of police harassment. So he was getting into the politics at that time. And I just want to say, like, even in 1978, he was writing books. He was he had dreams like we got to respect that. Like he's one of the OGs of this culture and he still had 
dreams and he wanted to do big things and i feel like this culture a lot of people it's not everybody but a lot of people feel like if you're part of this culture you can't do bigger things you can't have dreams you just got to stay quiet ride your motorcycle and live like you know away from the world and stuff like that and like sunny is an inspiration to a lot of people to make them understand that you could be part of this culture and be great and have dreams so when he parlayed with the other clubs about the police harassment the clubs voted to ally under a one percent of patch to be worn on their respective colors the term refers to a comment allegedly made by the ama the american motorcyclist association that 99 percent of motorcyclists were law-abiding citizens implying that the last one percent were outlaws so it's kind of interesting because the stuff that we talk about on the show about dead and a lot of beefs about flying under one banner or not necessarily flying under one banner but just having that respect sunny was already doing it back in those days and i know a lot happened throughout history where that didn't seem to work out the way it should have but there are people from the beginning that were thinking this way Barger features prominently in Hunter S. Thompson's book, Hell's Angels, The Strange and Terrible Saga of the Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs. Barger and the Hell's Angels are also depicted in Tom Wolfe's The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test during Ken Hesse's LA Honda Encampment. He appears in the documentary film about the Altamont Free Concert, Gimme Shelter, in 1970. If you're not familiar with the Altamont incident, I have a video. I will link that down where they talk about that whole situation. Barger temporarily resigned as president of the Oakland chapter in June 1970 to fight the charges, but returned to the position within months after his successor, John Johnny Angel Palomar, was sentenced to 10-year prison term for shooting a bartender. Barger was charged with the May 21, 1972 murder of Servio Winston Ajero, a drug dealer from McAllen, Texas, who had traveled to Oakland with a consignment of narcotics for sale. On March 16, 1973, Barger was sentenced to a prison term of 10 years to life after he was convicted of possession of narcotics for sale and possession of a weapon by a convicted felon. In 1983, Barger was diagnosed with throat cancer. Michael O'Farrell served as president of the Oakland Hells Angels while he received and recovered from treatment. Barger was convicted of conspiracy on October 28, 1988 and was sentenced to four-year prison term. Following the year, Barger was released from FGI Phoenix in Arizona on November 6, 1992 after serving three and a half years of a four-year sentence. So he did hella time a lot of time in this lifestyle he put in a lot of work for this lifestyle in 2000 Barger became a best-selling author with his autobiography hell's angel and how dope is it that he does all this time he goes through all this stuff and still he becomes a bestseller like there's so much light that comes from the dark if you i don't know if any of you have experience with doing time and stuff like that i did a two flat surely not the amount of time that he did but you know just you know being in prison and just hitting those lowest of lows and then rising from it is just it's the best thing in the world so he became a best-selling author for his autobiography hell's angel the life and times of sonny barger and the hell's angels increasing tensions between the hell's angels and other motorcycle clubs led the barger organizing a peace conference scheduled to be held in the arizona desert following the april 2002 Laughlin River Run Motorcycle Rally in Laughlin, Nevada. The meeting was canceled, however, as a result of the River Run Riot, a confrontation between the members of the Hells Angels and the Mongols Motorcycle Club at the rally which ended with three deaths. On March 7, 2003, Barger was arrested by Manicopa County Sheriff's Office deputies after reporting domestic dispute with his wife noel and the stepdaughter sarah at their home in new river arizona noel suffered a broken rib and back and a lacerated spleen barger was then sentenced to an eight-day jail term for aggravated assault he married his fourth wife zarana on june 26 2005 in his recent years barger has worked to promote motorcycle safety he co-authored a book on the subject with darvin holstrom authored the book idiot's guide to motorcycles and let's ride sunny barger's guide to motorcycling on november 30 2010 barger made a guest appearance as lenny the pimp 
on season three finale of the FX television series, Sons of Anarchy, about a fictional outlaw motorcycle club. So from going to prison to, to being one of the founding fathers of this culture, you know, just being in clubs in a time where all of that was being created, Sonny is definitely a legend. And the only reason why Sonny wasn't the first ever motorcycle heavyweight is because everybody expect that you know that's those are the first people that you would expect so i wanted to be a little bit more crafty if you haven't seen the other motorcycle heavyweights i heard somebody speaking down on the fact that i chose hulk hogan that i chose several actors and stuff like that people were telling me about it and this isn't about who is the meanest roughest toughest gangster one percenter president this isn't about positional value of a club who has the the biggest name as far as like who was the most known press this isn't about that sonny bog is a legend because of his whole life everything that he did but the people that i mentioned too are legends because they got people to ride on bikes you can't talk down on somebody like hulk hogan that influenced somebody like me who now is influencing many people that jump on bikes now and say that he's not a heavyweight that he didn't inspire anybody to get on tools like he literally inspired me who inspires people every day so you can't talk down on people on their preferences you know and i definitely agree with the people that have said that sunny is mount rushmore of of motorcycle heavyweights i definitely agree with that let me know in the comments what you think is the mount rushmore of our culture who should be celebrated and it's not just you know that you have to be a club member to be that or whatever it's your impact on the culture your impact on motorcycles it could be motorcycle clubs too that doesn't disqualify you but that's not the only factor let me know in the comments give me a pound somebody that i have not covered that you think is a motorcycle heavyweight and thank you for tuning in to demons road tv the holy grail of mc culture like subscribe and comment and oh yeah we ghosting baby